to it's probably been a month since Gretchen and I said we were gonna come back and I know that Gretchen's made a couple of individual videos but I haven't made any to be fair I've started two and then never finished them one was a vlog making the second one and I still want to do that video I just depression made me sleep a lot and I was doing chores at the same time and we'll uh we'll keep working on that video but uh I need to make a video like I need to do it I just need to do it so I'm gonna do a book haul because it's been like a year or more since the last time I did this and in that time I've accrued books it's easy to do it doesn't require prep or reading or anything other than just being like, look at this stuff I have. Still feels weird to me to make, but uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna feel bad. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do it. I've broken this up into four categories of books, one of which is gifts, one of which is sequels to books I read last year and liked, one of which is uh, whim buys or new releases or the ones that I bought because of like some sort of thing like that maybe a booktuber talked about it something like that it's just like things that I wanted they don't really fit into another category and then the last category and by that I mean the first category because it's what I'm talking about to begin with is books by Shannon McGuire <laughs> most recent of which being uh, Middle Game by Shannon McGuire a collection of her short stories literally was released yesterday I uh, picked it up today because I had pre-ordered it. It is a chonky book for short story collection, uh, but I'm excited because one of the personal things that I wanted to do this year was to read more short story collections because I actually really enjoy the format and part of that video that I started and didn't finish has to do with short stories, but we will get there. But this one is Shannon McGuire's. Um, if you follow Books with Lala, she read this last month and loved it. And I know that she's a big Shannon McGuire fan, as I am as well, having read In an Absent Dream last year and like actually loving the hell out of it. If you want to hear me and Gretchen and Taylor talk about that, we read it for our book club Bibliomancy for Beginners in January last year, two years ago. Ooh, time. I think it was last year. It was during our own voices subsection of like category that we did um we read the hate you give in that like trio of picks as well so yeah this guy speaking of every heart a doorway i have beneath the sugar sky and in an absent dream the third and fourth books respectively in the wayward children series i read every heart a doorway last year with the book club and i read down among the sticks and bones last fall I don't physically own either of those guys and I will need to rectify it and probably also going to have to get the hardcover because these two are in hardcover and then there's a new one coming out this year as well or beginning of next year which I'm also excited about because it has to do with Jack again and Jack was my favorite character so yeah I have not read these yet will be reading them been picking them up as they've come out pretty much know that I'm going to enjoy them know that I'm going to love them but I have them. In case you wanted to know which characters these two were focusing on, In an Absent Dream focuses on Lundy, who was one of the teachers in the school from the first book, and Beneath the Sugar Sky actually focuses on the daughter of one of the people who was murdered in the first book, even though her mom was murdered. Question mark? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> and then the last Shannon McGuire book that I have is actually published under her pen name, Mara Grant, Into the Drawing Deep. You guys, I think, may have seen this last year because I had mentioned that I wanted to read it in Booktubeathon, but I don't think I ever officially hauled it. So I'm adding it to the list because this is actually maybe of the four Shannon McGuire books, the one that I'm most excited about because it's mermaid horror. And we all know how I feel about horror. And also, I feel like mermaids are a thing right now. Like, there's a lot of books coming out that have to do with mermaids, and I don't know if it's, like, Shape of Water related, but there's going to be another mermaid book on this list of books that I've purchased 
not just this one. I think the next section I'm gonna do is the smallest section and that is sequels to books I read last year and loved. The first book in that subsection is The Phoenix Empress by K.R. Sonalt Rivera. It is the second book in the Bright Ascendancy series, which uh, the first book was The Tiger's Daughter, which I read and really loved. Folks looking for Asian-inspired fantasy, this is a good pick. Folks looking for female-female romance, this is a good pick. A lot of the reviews I've seen on this one that are negative have to do with the fact that this book in particular follows a period of time where our two leading ladies are not together whereas the first book talked a lot about um, their meeting and growing up and how they got to be to a certain point this will follow the point in time where the two were separated and i personally am okay with that because it's like a continuation of the story um also these covers are beautiful and i love them forever and ever and ever i know that there's a third book that's going to be coming out as well so i need to get onto this and like read it i really enjoyed the first one highly recommend that one um, I don't think I ever did a full review of it because it was during the time period when I was not doing anything, but uh, I'm going to pick this one up soon and hopefully it will be awesome. The second book in this category is On the Shoulder of Titans by Andrew Rowe, which is the second book in the Arcane Ascension series because we need to have two Ascension things. The first book in this one is Sufficiently Advanced Magic, which I read last year and I did do a book review on. This guy is chunky. Thick boy. I started it, and by that I mean I think I've read a chapter. But, um, yeah. I really enjoyed the first one's, um, magic system and the way that it works. This world is based, or at least the magic system is based sort of on old school JRPG tower fights, where the way that you get your magic is you enter the tower, you have to go through puzzles or monster battles or whatever it is, and then if you make your way out of that floor, you gain a like rune on your body somewhere that attunes you with a particular type of magic and depending on how you went through the tower and which way you went and all of that stuff you'll get different magic different people have different magic and um you can go higher up the towers to get different attunements and also there are more than one tower and each of the towers give different attunements um, like you can only get certain attunements from certain towers so that was super interesting to me. I'm looking forward to this. This one also has a queer protagonist, although I think he falls more on the asexual spectrum, which obviously is of interest to me as someone who identifies on the ace spectrum. The next category are books that were given to me, most of which were given to me as Christmas gifts this past year. The only one that was not given to me as a Christmas gift is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which yes, I have already read, but look at this beautiful 10th anniversary edition. Taylor got it for me kind of as a Christmas gift, kind of as a birthday gift. Got it signed by Pat Rothfuss because he got to visit him because he's out in Boston where like there's actual people going places and talking about stuff and I wasn't able to make it out there because I was working. What else is new? I think this is my third edition, fourth edition, third edition of this particular book. Clearly I loved it. Um, highly recommend to anybody that's a fan of fantasy and even folks who aren't a fan of fantasy. Folks who've been around with the channel a while know that I have sort of a love-hate relationship with fantasy where I'm often intrigued by them but have a hard time either reading and finishing or um, I'm very nitpicky of the genre if that makes sense. I don't know if it's just my brain type but um, aside from a very small section in this that happens about 100 pages in that I found quite boring very great book. The second book is phenomenal. Like, no f faults at all with the second book. Um, but the new cover is beautiful. It's got beautiful red pages. Highly recommend it. <laughs> now I've got a weird one. Nonfiction. This one's The Flavor Thesaurus, a compendium of pairings, recipes, and ideas for the creative cook. Um, I asked my mom for this for Christmas and I ended up getting it. It is a nonfiction book talking about which herbs and spices and foods go well together and how to learn how to make recipes on the fly pretty much by knowing like which flavors to pick out and which ones go well together, what to add to it to get more of a balance, things like that. As someone who enjoys cooking and enjoys food, this was an interesting one to me. I do have a pretty good palate of like being able to taste something and know what goes into it, but I would kind of like to know a little bit more about the science behind which things go well together and sort of maybe have a little bit more of an actual knowledge base on that one. So I have not read this one yet, 
but uh, I plan to and maybe we'll talk about it because I don't talk about nonfiction all that much on this channel and I read some but this is a particular subset of nonfiction that's interesting. The next two I got from my grandmother and I again had asked for them. The first of which is In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt. I think actually I heard this from Claire at the Book Fox. Maybe? I know she did a review where she talked about it. I think that's where I heard it. Could have been somewhere else though. I watch booktube and sometimes I hear about a book and I'm like I want it and then I ask for it for Christmas and then I get it and then I haven't read it yet but I own it so I can read it when I read things. Not surprising based on the cover this guy's a horror book it takes place in New England which folks know I live here. Um, it's psychological horror but it also seems to have some elements of either magical realism or um, perhaps um, some other speculative type things. There's mention in the dust jacket of uh, being on a ship made of living human bones. Intrigued! The next book is Vermilion by Molly Tanzer, which is a western slash sci-fi um, it also has Asian elements in this one. It takes place in the United States in an alternate universe with speculative elements, monsters, and the like, but also semi-realistic in that she, like, is fighting nature and bears and stuff like that. She is Asian American. Um, there is mention of a particular type of Chinese-based ghost type thing. Um, there's a picture of a Chinese based dragon on the back. Um, there's a mention of a sanatorium, so a little bit of a spookiness, a little bit of a western, which I'm intrigued about and definitely sci-fi, plus the cover is beautiful and I love it. Like look at this, it just works really well. Um, so I asked for it for Christmas and I got it and I'm excited about that. And we are on to the last section, which is the largest section, which is kind of the miscellaneous section. New books, books I was excited about, books I wanted to read, books I heard about somewhere that didn't really fit into any of the other categories. The first of which is The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima? 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 Reagan of Peru's Project is a big fan of this author, and when I was working at Barnes & Noble, I picked up the first book in the second series set in this world, but Reagan actually said when I was listening to one of her reviews of those books that you should read the series first. I picked it up at the library, read like I want to say like 100 pages of it from the library, liked it enough to grab my own copy. Haven't continued since then because I've been struggling with reading the last two years now. Struggle bus, but um I enjoyed what I read of this enough to grab my own copy when my copy from the library was going to expire. Um, I got the ebook from the library so it was going to expire. Um, this takes place in a fantasy world. I believe it is young adult fantasy. Um, it ha so far has had sort of like this um, socioeconomic split between like folks that live more rural life versus a princess slash lords and ladies sort of subsection. I'm sure they cross at some point. Um, I'll be intrigued to see how this works out. The magic system in here is interesting. It seems to be sort of focused solely on the upper class folks. The lords and ladies seem to be able to do magic whereas the common folk are unable to and or were never trained to and or have a different kind of magic because they're n not rich. So would be intrigued to see how that all plays out in a thing. Gretchen read a different series by her and was not a fan, but I've heard good things about this one and the subsequent series, which I have a, the first book in that series, not knowing that it was actually a sequel series to this series when I bought it at the time. The next book is a short story collection, The Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. 
I picked this up in order to read it with the book club on the Poptimists Discord. If you are not on there, get on there. It's lots of chatting and fun with bookish people. I am never able to attend the meetings on these guys because I work weekends, because I work in retail. Um, but I did read this and I'm planning to do a video so that I can at least sort of get my thoughts out there and hopefully some of those folks can comment on it and I can sort of belatedly get in on the discussion on this one. Um, so you'll definitely see this coming up soon. Um, yeah, short story collection. Shimamana Ngozi Adichie is touted in the lit fic section of booktube. A lot of folks really loved Americana, which I own but have not read. Um, and I've actually, for whatever reason, been reading a lot of um, African or African-American lit, um, and this falls into that subsection. So, yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much on it. It's short stories, um, lit fic short stories, so if you like that sort of thing, there's that. I will do a more in-depth video talking about the actual stories and stuff when I get to it, if I can ever do anything. Remember when I said there was going to be another mermaid book on the list? Here's the Pisces by Melissa Broder. Um, this has been described to me as existential mermaid erotica. I gave Taylor a copy of this for his birthday slash Christmas because we see each other like once a year nowadays. So this might be something that we both read, uh, but he's finishing up his dissertation and therefore has zero time and is not reading anything except for the stuff for that. Hopefully when he gets done with that, maybe we can read it. Maybe it'll be a book club pick. Who knows? But, um... The one thing I will say about this is that if you are intrigued either by the cover or the idea of existential mermaid erotica, um, there is animal neglect in here. So if that's something that bothers you and is something that you don't want to deal with, not gonna recommend this one. Um, it's in here. You sort of have to be aware of that going into it. Um, I don't like the idea of animal neglect, but... I don't think that it's something that's particularly triggering for me when reading, um, so I think that I'll be okay. I want to read this to discuss it because the idea and also the themes of it seem super interesting, and mermaids are a thing right now. Like I said, there's like a huge subsection of mermaid literature coming out. They're like the new vampires. <laughs> I also mentioned books in Lala earlier, and one of the books that she read earlier this year was My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I picked this up as soon as she talked about what this book was about. It seems to be a folie adieu type thriller um, with a husband and wife where I believe the wife is the murderer and the husband maybe finds her victims um, or vice versa. I think it's the, that the wife is the murderer and it's sort of to spice up their life. That's like how they have fun is just murder people. Um, and folie adieu is a very interesting subsection of um, like serial killing or um, true crime that I enjoy and I haven't read a good thriller in a couple of years. Like I think the last really good thriller I read was Night Film by Marisha Pessel so I'm hoping that I really enjoy this. I know that Kayla did and I trust her when she talks about thrillers because she's a thriller buff and I don't read them too often. Again, it's another genre that like I either super love or hate because I'm very picky about it. Um, but I'm hoping that my interest in the aspects of this, the like parts of the plot that are interesting to me, help me get through it one and then two, hopefully it's done well enough that I like it when I'm done with it. Um, the last book is something that is maybe surprising for those of you who know me, but not surprising for anybody in the SFF community, and that's The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which has been one of my most anticipated books for over a year. Like, as soon as arcs of this started cropping up by folks, a lot of folks were a big fan of her first series. The first book in that, I think, is The Bone Season. I did not read it. Um, it's not that I don't want to read it. I just don't think I ever picked it up. Um, this series and, like, what this like particular book um, had as its synopsis called out to me a little bit more than The Bone Season did. And I think, honestly, if I enjoy this one, that that's something that I'll look into, that I'll look into grabbing. Thick, chunky fantasy. Um, it, I haven't started it, and 
part of me bought it as a cover buy because look at that cover it's freaking gorgeous but I've also been reading a lot of fantasy lately or been interested in picking up a lot of fantasy lately and I figured that if I was gonna do it let's go all in get the thing that everybody's talking about so that I can join into the conversation because everybody's reading it and talking about it and it isn't FOMO per se it's the opposite of FOMO it's not fear of missing out but like wanting to join in if that makes sense does that make sense w t j i widgy widgy it's widgy there's all of the books that i bought this year well in the past year or so i'm sure there may have been one or two that i'm missing that i purchased but those are like interesting ones barb has been lying down this entire i had to pull the thing okay <laughs> Let's just fix this. Fix this right here, right now, real quick. Look how great. It was definitely like that the whole video. <laughs> definitely not anything else. Um, those were the books that I picked up in the past year that I wanted to talk about. They're the ones that I'm most likely to possibly do discussions or reviews of. They're the ones that I'm sort of excited about that I think I'll pick up sooner rather than later, but I haven't been reading very much in general. Um, I've been struggling. I think I've read four books in total this year, one of which was a reread. So, yeah, that's what I got. Um, Gretchen and I have a plan to film a thing on Friday, but it may not happen because she's been very ill. She's been running around. It's finals season for her too, so she's been working on that. She started her new job. I was moving. I just had to buy a new car because my car broke and died and didn't have brakes, which is important for cars. Um, and yeah, I'm just super tired. I'm just super tired and struggling to do anything, let alone um, things that I enjoy doing, like just doing the things I have to do. I've pretty much just been sleeping and um, going to work and then coming home and sleeping and going to work. And that's all I do. That's all I do ad nauseum on repeat forever. Um, but now that I've made one video, hopefully I can make another video and another video and I can finish the video that I started. We can talk about that. And hopefully book club will come back this month. We tentatively had wanted to. Taylor can't this month, but um, Gretchen and I said that we might, and we might see if any of our friends, like maybe Casey or one of our newer friends that we've gotten in the last couple of years wanted to jump in and read a book and talk about it and do a podcast because I've been paying for podcast hosting and have only posted one podcast. Uh, that's not great, but yeah, that's a thing that we're trying to do, and I, we want to do more, and I'm struggling, and Gretchen's struggling, and maybe the idea here is not to force myself to do it every week, but to just be like, do it. Like, just do it. When you can, do it. Be proud of yourself. You did it. Proud of you, Michaela. You did it. Um, I want to start commenting on people's videos again because part of my mental health makes me just like retreat into myself and not reach out because I don't feel stable enough or like I have anything to say but I would like to just reach out into the community again say hi here's the things I have to say um, if you're new and you've joined us hi we're a multi-person channel so it's not just me Hopefully some of the books you saw here you'd like to hear about, but Gretchen does a bunch of stuff on kids books and young adult books and historical fiction and historical nonfiction biographies. Um, so yeah, if you like that, there's also that on this channel. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. I will hopefully see you again soon. Maybe next week, if I can get my shit together, though I'm working five days in a row, have one day off, and then work another five days in a row. So, who knows? Who knows? Maybe I just die in a hole. <laughs> Bye. Hope you have a good week. See you then.